What's up guys, Brian here with BPS Customs. You guys asked for more gaming builds, I'm gonna give you more gaming builds. This back here is a brand new Epic X99 gaming system and we're gonna take a closer look at it right now. All right, so if you guys are familiar with my channel, you've probably at least seen me reference Deep Red, which is my personal system. It's one that I use for video editing and for light gaming. It's something that took me about 30 hours to complete. You can find those build logs right up here. It served me really well for the past, you know, maybe year or so, but there are certain things about that system that I always kind of wish that I could have changed. The first thing that I really wish that I could have changed was the case. Now, the Fantex Evolve ATX is a fabulous case, and I'd recommend it for almost any build. The problem is that it doesn't provide a huge amount of clearance at the top between the rails for mounting the radiator and the motherboard. This means that if you have radiator and fans mounted at the top, it's gonna cover up your motherboard, VRMs, and also some of the memory, which is not a look that I really wanted. In order to remedy this, what I did was I actually wedged some fans in between the case rails at the top and the mounting tray for the radiator support. This was functional, but there were some problems here. Because the radiator and fans were not flush mounted to each other, there was a lot of air leakage out the side between them. Additionally, I had to kind of mutilate the case to get the fans to fit in there. And as a result, aesthetically, if you take the top panel of the case off, it really looks like kind of a nightmare. This directly led to the second issue that I wanted to resolve, which was temperatures of components inside the loop. Now, because I wasn't getting the best and most efficient airflow through the radiators, the cooling capacity of the radiators that I had installed was diminished. And as a result, the temperatures of the core components, the GPUs and the CPU, were higher than they should have been. That's not to say that they were out of control high or that they were problematically high, but for a full custom loop, they were definitely sitting a little bit higher than where I wanted them. And then we have the third issue, which I guess is fairly minor, but again, it has to deal with the case, and it's the cable management space in the back of the motherboard tray. Now, the Fantex Evolve ATX has plenty of room back there for any normal system, but this system had pump wiring, it had wiring for lighting, it had multiple fans and splitters, and in addition, it had obviously the case power wiring. So I was running into a lot of issues running things neatly. Uh, closing the back panel was kind of a chore, even though it did close. Uh, I wanted to redo it for a long time and I just felt that if I really took that on, it was gonna take me down a rabbit hole and so I just kind of left it. So then the Titan X's were announced and while I wasn't initially impressed, they certainly do provide a performance upgrade over the GTX 1080s that were in that system. So the whole kind of confluence of events really led me to make the determination that I did want to do a rebuild of this system. So let's just say that that rebuild is in progress. But in the interim, I needed a system to use for editing, some light gaming, and just to have something sitting behind me when I do these videos. So what I did was I completely disassembled Deep Red. And I thought long and hard about how I would want the next system to look. And the conclusion that I came to was that I really liked the way the entry level X99 system that I built up here looked when it was all built out. The white case, the S340 Elite, combined with the black PCB motherboard with white accenting, and then some subtle color accenting on the cables, and the GPU really made for something that was striking to look at. So I made the decision that I was going to go with a similar theme for my rebuild, which meant that not only was a white case needed, but I needed to change up the motherboard. But the problem is I had everything disassembled and I needed a video editing system uh, to use until I was able to have this whole project come together. So I rebuilt the system in the S340 Elite, and that's what you see behind me. So in the S340, what we have right now is kind of a mishmash of parts, a lot of stuff that's gonna be transferred into the main system rebuild when it is done, and some parts that will not. But as this is gonna be sitting behind me for a while, I'm gonna be using it for video editing and for some light gaming. I wanted to make sure that not only did it look good, but that it performed good as well. 
To that end, I stuck with the i7-6900K as the base of our system, and it's sitting in a Gigabyte X99 Ultra Gaming motherboard. Now, the Gigabyte motherboard is going to provide us with the white covers on the I.O. shroud, the VRMs, and the chipset, along with the red accenting all around that will really complement our color scheme. Additionally, it's a fantastic overclocking motherboard and fits uh, the ATX form factor that I wanted. Now, cooling the processor right now is a Corsair H100i. It's efficient, it's going to keep the processor cool temporarily, and it'll be perfect for this system for now. The case fans that you see in this build are Corsair HD120 RGBs. Now, one of the reasons that I wanted to change up the fans that I was using is because I made the decision that I wasn't going to be using any auxiliary lighting. Now, I really like the NZXT Hue Plus. I think the software, the cam software is really good, and I think obviously the lighting effects that it provides along with the combination with the air fans is fantastic but I wanna to try to minimize the amount of cable clutter inside the case. And obviously you're gonna need case fans either way. So if you could find fans that both illuminate the case while providing you some functionality, I think that's the best compromise. When the HD120s were announced, I really liked the way they provided enough illumination for the interior of the case that you could see everything without being overpowering. The lighting is even around the circumference of the fan and the whites are fairly true. As far as cabling goes, because this is a temporary system build, I didn't want to go crazy with replacing all the cables until I was ready to rebuild everything fully, but I did want everything to match. So to that end, what I did was I reused the 24 pin cable that I had in deep red. Uh, it matches this system aesthetic. It has the red and some grays, which is fine. Although it does have some black, which is something that I'm going to try to get away from in the new build. But for now, it certainly will do uh, just fine. Also, I'm using some white Corsair EPS and PCIe cables. You can see that while they still look good and they still match, I didn't put any cable combs on them or anything along those lines. This is a temporary build and you know it still looks fine the way it is, so I didn't want to go super crazy. However, what I did do is black out the GeForce GTX logo on the GTX 1080 that's in this system. Now, if you guys want a tutorial on how to do that, hit me up in the comments down below, and if I get enough responses, I'll certainly consider it. But the reason that I did this is because I wanted to make the Founders Edition card color neutral, and the only thing that was preventing that was the green LED on the side. Now the entire card is black and silver, which will match with basically any build. It's certainly very possible that you'll see this very 1080 in other builds that I do in the future for that very reason. Now, as I've said a couple times, this is a temporary system, but it's gonna be sitting on my desk for a couple of months, most likely, and to that end, not only am I gonna be editing videos on it, I will probably be doing some gaming on it. So let's see how it performs. So as you guys can see, this system is clearly no slouch in the performance department. It can run almost any game at 4K, uh, but for those of you who really are frame rate snobs, maybe you have to turn a couple settings down in order to achieve 60 FPS. But the frame rates that we were getting on these very demanding games were certainly impressive for a one GPU setup. I've already done a video edit on this system and I was certainly impressed with the speed at which the render came out. Now granted, it's gonna be about the same as Deep Red was, but at the same time, this is a much smaller case much simpler configuration, uh, something that is almost equally pleasing to look at. But that being said, I certainly am very excited to get this project started. I'm gonna be reusing a lot of these components. You'll see a very similar look 
in the final build. But you guys will certainly see more of that on this channel if you get subscribed. Make sure you hit that little bell down there so that you know when I upload a video. Also consider checking out my merchandise store. You can find the link to that down in the video description. As always guys, I'm Brian with BPS Customs. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.